You will safeguard the people, drive the enemy into the castle, and negotiate. You have chosen a righteous path, Wolfort. But do you really think negotiations will prevail? Such sympathy may be your downfall. Even so, this is the path we have chosen. Then walk tall. It is time to test your mettle. I must return to Hyzant and see Minister Cancel. Next we meet, you will have both of our armies at your backs. You have my thanks. We cannot afford to lose this fight. For Norzelia. I thought this battle was for Glenbrook. This is not a simple struggle for power, Minister Serenon. The Goddess, the Source, Iron? The War of Thirty Years Ago comes back to haunt us because the old cling to relics of the past. Norzelia needs to be born anew. Right now, the people of every nation are searching for a young standard bearer to guide them. A standard bearer? Yes, people like you and me. This war is a fine opportunity for us to show our worth to Norzelia. <laughs> House Wolfort and Hyzant join forces and begin planning Glenbrook's recapture. But with the Norzelia River and the Esfrosti armies in their way, retaking the capital will be no easy feat. Frederica proposes they destroy the bridge linking the castle to the rest of the capital, isolating the enemy and forcing them to parley. Though it may draw out the conflict, it is well worth it if they can avoid causing suffering to the people. Saranoa and the others agree to the plan. In support of House Wolfort, Hyzant's great army marches forth for the first time since the Salt Iron War. The Hyzantian forces should be arriving any moment, Frederica. Well then, let us make them welcome. My lady, are... Are you certain this is the path you desire? We are to battle against your people. Against Thallus and Erica. I am keenly aware of that. Of course you are. But simply understanding a thing doesn't mean you are ready to face it. A single second's hesitation on the battlefield could cost you your life. Worry not. I shall prevail against any who stand against me. Even my siblings. To try and save them? No. To save myself. And to save House Wolfort. Minister Saranoa, Minister Cancel and myself have brought what troops we could muster. I am grateful for your assistance. It was an arduous journey. Is there anywhere the soldiers could rest? We've prepared barracks at the harbor. Please use them freely. You do think of everything. Aizan does not mobilize the force so large since the Salt Iron War. Yet I hear you intend to settle this, not by battle, but by parley. The Holy One will not agree to any half-hearted measures. The pressures of a large army on the capital's threshold is part of our plan. Come inside and I will explain the rest. General, House Wolfort and Hyzant have joined forces. There are indications their armies intend to march upon the capital. Which direction will they come from? We cannot yet be certain. Close the city gates and rally the garrisons. I want the way to the castle completely blockaded. And we ought to consider their attack from the river. 
House Wolfort knows very well how difficult this castle is to take. I doubt they think to capture it with a direct assault. Indeed. Byzantian soldiers are used to desert conditions. Doubtful they'd be keen to engage us in a marine battle. Though acting on that assumption and sending all our troops to defend the land route does leave a vulnerability the enemy could exploit. Send a party to scout along the riverbanks, then have them report to the harbor and ready our ship. Yes, General. Why beat around the bush? We have the soldiers, we should strike and end them. It's best to avoid open battle. With the capital and White Home under our control, we have the advantage. All that tells me is you're frightened of Wolfort. There is no enemy safe not to fear. A leader's hubris is the death of her soldiers. Frederica is attacking us. What does it matter how many soldiers die? I command you to kill Frederica, Avlora. Personal grudges have no place in the battlefield. Silence! Gustadolf entrusted us with the castle's protection in his absence. Noble as frosty blood flows through our veins. How dare you order us about! You do well to remember what you are, Flora. A simple orphan who doesn't even know her true name. Yet it is this simple orphan in charge of our army. Insult me all you like. I will not allow open battle. Obstinate woman. No matter. The reinforcements our brother sent are under our command. I shall lead soldiers into the capital myself and crush Wolfort's forces when they arrive. Is this the S-Frost I am to defend? General of Laura. My spies have ascertained the situation at the capital. The bulk of the enemy is holed up in Whiteholm Castle. Right now, they don't seem to be very active. And what of the common folk? Their daily lives progress apace. It seems the enemy has yet to notice our movements. Perfect conditions to execute Lady Frederica's plan. If the people are at ease, we should be able to seize the capital without resorting to all-out battle. Thank goodness. Then let's review the plan. First, my retinue shall take a small vessel to Whiteholm Castle and destroy the bridge. Are you certain you want to go by yourselves? We can lend you some soldiers. The fewer of us there are, the less likely we are to be spotted. We'll manage. We'll have the blast crystal. Oh yes, a bridge like that'll come falling down pretty easy. You'll see. The explosion will be your signal to march into the capital and keep the people calm, without... Without using force, yes. I shall impress upon my soldiers they are not to act rashly. Thank you, Minister. As for you, Minister Campsell, we'd like you to take command of the naval forces to blockade the castle. Very well. I can't say I'm much experienced in marine warfare, but I'll do my best. Destroy the bridge, capture the town, blockade the river, isolate the enemy in the castle, and turn that impregnable fortress into their prison. Once they're trapped, they'll have no choice but to parley with us and release their stranglehold on Glenbrook. I hope you're right. A word of caution before we begin. Prince Roland, you are aware they will likely use Queen Cordelia as leverage when the time for parley comes. But no matter what pressure they apply, we cannot allow them to break us, should the worst come to pass. I understand. I do not expect the fight to regain control of our kingdom to be painless. <sighs> Good. We have our plan. Now we must act upon it. Then we shall depart at once, until we meet again in the capital. Farewell, and good luck to us all. Erica, Thallus, I cannot put off fighting them any longer.
My, you're certainly calm for someone about to be sold off in the morrow. Sold off? You would compare my marriage into House Wolfort to trading coin for flesh. Why I am to be a beacon of allyship, a bridge between our two lands. Yes, yes. So tell me, dear, how do you plan on seducing the Wolfort boy? Wait, let me guess. You'll use the same charms your mother did on our father. <sighs> oh, enough cajoling, Erica. You're apt to make her cry. And Frederica, you know you don't have to take such abuse in silence, don't you? In any case, you seem to be under the impression that you've been entrusted with some crucial task. That couldn't be further from the truth. This is only to get you out of the way, same as your mother. You're no use to anyone in Esfrost. <laughs> but you already know that, don't you? Well, every happiness to you, dear sister. I knew before was so very limited. No matter what awful thing happened to me, I believed I could do nothing but suffer in silence. But staying quiet in the face of injustice is tantamount to condoning it. I needed to stand up and fight for myself. Becoming part of House Wolfort was the best thing to ever happen to me. Erica, Thallus, I'm done running. In the dead of night, a small ship slips silently into Whiteholm Castle. Aboard are none other than the elite Wolfert fighters, led by Sarah Noah himself. All right, it's time. Where should we set the blast crystal, Milo? Hmm, right around the middle of the bridge would be perfect. The wood will splinter apart quite nicely. Plus. Any repairs we'll need to make later will be easy. In the middle it is. We'll search for a suitable spot. In the meantime, Milo, you ready the blast crystal. With pleasure. The time for you to awaken is nigh, my patient little Elfric. Just give me the command. All right, then let's... Wolfort? When did you get here? Thallus! <laughs> oh, I am so glad we didn't leave this to Avlora. I am shocked, Frederica, to find you sneaking around like a common thief. Eric. 
Africa. Ah, oh, they've got us surrounded. There's nowhere left to run, dear Frederica. That's where you're mistaken. There is always a path forward. Oh, I tire of your bravado. How about this? Kneel to me, and I shall forgive you. Get on your hands and knees and beg for my mercy. Go on. <sighs> I said beg. I will not. What? Obeying unjust orders is cowardice. And silence is acquiescence. What are you muttering about? Do not speak to me. I will cower to your whims no longer. <laughs> well, well, you finally learned how to stand up for yourself. Right before you die. Kill them. Every last one. Farewell, Erica. Alice. Frederica. This isn't over yet. We must fell the bridge before reinforcements arrive. Benedict's right. Milo? As you command. Now then, little Elfric, it's showtime. What a beautiful sight that bridge made coming down. You've outdone yourself, House Wolfort. I am flattered. The capital? It is ours. No fighting, no bloodshed, and no civilian casualties so far. Thank you, Minister. Now, all we have to contend with is Whiteholm Castle itself. What of the river blockade? Minister Cancel is progressing apace. It's taking slightly longer than anticipated, but should be under control soon. So we succeeded in trapping Avlor and the others. But we still need to determine how to destroy them. There's no need to fight anymore. We'll send an envoy to negotiate a ceasefire. But will they agree to that? A complete reforming of broken diplomatic ties, bloodless surrender. These are not easy conditions to agree to. True. Which is why success ultimately depends on who we send as our envoy. I shall go. This was my idea in the first place. Do not shoulder this burden so rashly. We must consider carefully who to send. All of us. Together. Saranoa. Very well. I shall leave the decision in your hands. I would like to ascertain the state of things at the castle before negotiations begin. It is to our advantage to know how many soldiers there are and what their morale is. Agreed. Huet, you scout for us from the skies. But of course, I shall return with the information post haste. Serenoa faces the Asfrosti army led by Phallus and Erika upon Whiteholm Bridge and emerges victorious. They use the Alfred to destroy the bridge and succeed in isolating the enemy within Whiteholm Castle. Meanwhile, the Hyzantian army led by Minister Exhan arrives in the city. They begin to wrest control of Glenbrook away from the Esfrosti forces while safeguarding the people. Everything goes according to House Wolfort's plan. All that remains is to negotiate terms of surrender with General of Laura.
General of Laura fled with Queen Cordelia beside her. Yes. I saw them board one of the warships in the harbor. I thought the surrounding waters were being blockaded by Minister Camsell. Some of his ships were encircled by the enemy. The General used that opening to escape. As Frost's expertise with ships far eclipses our own, she exploited the sole weakness in our plan. But she knew when to cut her losses and did it without thinking twice. I can respect that. This is no time to be impressed. We have to go after them. Prepare a boat. Wait. Our aim was to take back Glenbrook. With General Avlora gone, we can easily claim control over Whiteholm Castle. You're suggesting we just abandon Cordelia? No. Simply that there is an order to these things. Then I'll go by myself. You won't. Without you, our fight loses its purpose. My sister was kidnapped. Avlora ruined my family. Be patient, your highness. Sarah Noah, I'm going. Don't try to stop me. Let us give chase. Ironclad as frosty ships are slow. If we leave now, we can still catch them. Frederica. We mustn't be hasty. Queen Cordelia is yet another victim of Gustadolf. We must save her. I do not want to regret not going after her. Benedict, Roland is indeed our cause for this war. But once the war ends and people find out we abandoned the Queen, their faith in him will be lost. Will it now? Let us go to Queen Cordelia's aid. It is part of our fight as well. Thank you, my friend. The young lord's grown up to be a fine man, Benedict. Let's do what he asks. now as Frosty Curves, and we'll be taking Cordelia back with us. So we've been caught. Prepare for a fight. My lord, if you use the pulley, we can board their ship. But only one person can cross at a time. Careful not to get left there alone. Indeed. We must look before we leave. We won't be able to return with the pulley given the differing heights of our vessels. Understood. We will save the Queen. We must. We have taken your ship. It ends here, Avlora. I am sorry, my queen. Being overtaken by these traitors and failing to protect you is my life's greatest failure. General Aflora! You dare call us traitors? You invaded Glenbrook under the premise of peace! If not traitors, then how about Hyzantian dogs? Every dog has its day, and this one shall be mine. Please stop, Maxwell! Stand back, Cordelia! You're not Maxwell. What? There's no mistaking it. Roland! I see now. <laughs> oh, how I wish I could tell Gustadolf. Stop, Roland! 
I am sorry for all the pain I have caused you, Cordelia. But I will free you from this villain by my own hand. No, Roland! General of Lore is... Cordelia! Why? General of Laura protected me. Queen Cordelia! Run of Laura. Your Majesty, forgive me. Find her. She won't get far with those wounds. Queen Cordelia! Gila, she needs a healer. Cordelia? Cordelia! This frosty general takes Cordelia and flees on a warship. But Wolfort gives chase, and Avlora throws herself into the Norzelia River. Some of the remaining as frosty soldiers fight tooth and nail to keep their hold on the city, but are eventually bested by the Hyzantian army. Though Glenbrook has taken more damage than anticipated, her people are safe, and House Wolford breathes a sigh of relief to see their plan fulfilled. It looks like she's overcome the worst of it. Once she wakes up, she should be fine. Thank you, Minister Lila. She would not have made it without you. Glenbrook was our ally during the fight against Esfrost. You need not thank me, Prince. My apologies. I suppose I should call you King Roland now. No. My enthronement has yet to be announced. I see. I shall take my leave. Thank goodness. But why, Cordelia? Why did you shield our enemy? Overwhelmed by the forces of House Wolfhort, Esfrost's troops are scattered and driven from the Crown City. Glenbrook, at last, is free. Several days after this fateful battle, Queen Cordelia announces her intent to abdicate the throne and make way for another. Roland Glenbrook, his face no longer hidden from the world, will take his rightful place at the seat of power. With the Prince's friends having only just finished grieving his death, and his enemies having only just finished toasting to it, this news shocks the foundations not only of Glenbrook, but of Norzelia itself. By routing Esfrost's forces and leaving the city unscathed, House Wolfort displays their martial prowess and their loyalty to their liege. The Prince becomes king and condemns the schemes of Gustadolf, making known Esfrost's plot to usurp the throne. However, the people's reaction to this news is not quite a chorus of approval. It is plain that the ravages of war and the shame of subjugation have left an indelible mark on the once prosperous nation. Although the battle for Glenbrook is behind them, Serenoa and the rest of the city's liberators must make ready for a struggle of an entirely different sort. Congratulations on returning to your rightful throne, King Roland. Ah, you've returned. My friend. A word. Yes. I am honored to have had you by my side on this journey. To be able to call you friend. As am I, Roland. 
Your Majesty, representatives from Hyzant have arrived. We shan't make undue demands of your time, King Roland. We've simply come to say farewell. Without your aid, my people would still be under Esfrost's iron rule. Glenbrook owes you a debt of gratitude. Consider the debt paid. The knowledge we gleaned of Elfric's capabilities was more than worth our troubles. Indeed, it surpassed my every expectation. The Holy One is sure to be pleased with the results. Your Majesty, can we trust you to lift the embargo and keep Esfrost subdued? Of course. Lord Wolfort has promised his full cooperation in that regard. Your Majesty, lest you misunderstand your friend's position, allow me to make one matter abundantly clear. Minister Serenoa is of the Saintly Seven. He is not to serve at your whims, but by the grace of the Hierophant. I understand, but he is also a Lord of Glenbrook. More importantly, he is my friend. As such, I would ask for his assistance in the days ahead, as I have in days past. Your Majesty, it is plain that the friendship between you two runs deep. However, the rules of politics are old and immutable. And what does the Lord himself think of his new position? Of course, I am grateful for the honor Hyzant has bestowed upon me. I will do all in my power to serve both the Hierophant and King Roland with all faithfulness. In other words, the Hierophant does not have your full loyalty. Well, I... Glenbrook and Hyzant are to be two nations united in purpose. Surely it is reasonable that Lord Serenoa acts in service to both? Perhaps King Roland and the Hierophant should discuss my lord's role together. You are right, of course. It is not our place to assume the goddess's intent. Very well. I hope to meet with the Holy One as soon as my duties allow. I expect busy days ahead for you, Serenoa. Be prepared. Certainly, Your Majesty. Milo shall stay in Glenbrook for the time being. If there is aught she can assist you with, consider her at your complete disposal. Remember, Milo, that you are the symbol of friendship between our two nations. <laughs> but of course, I live to serve, Minister. And with that, we shall take our leave. May we meet again soon. They leave us with a spy. It seems we still haven't won their trust entirely. Whatever secrets they uncover will only attest to our commitment to the friendship between us. Still, their actions speak volumes. Their aid has not come without expectation of just recompense. Already, they seek to make Lord Serenoa their puppet. But we need Hyzant's aid to crush Esfrost. By the same token, we cannot resist Hyzant without Esfrost's might. And once Esfrost is laid low, Glenbrook will have served its purpose. What then would stop Hyzant from tightening their grip? Just as they did with the Rosal. The injustice I saw at the Source is not something I'll soon forget. If you require proof of Hyzant's true nature, you need only remember. I know. I know. This country is my home. Built by my father and the kings before him. Safeguarded by my sister and generations of my forebears. I will rebuild it. Restore its glory and its pride. We will not be treated as dogs at the end of a leash. For now, we must look within. 
Only after that work is done should we look without. So, the Crown City has fallen. I see. And what of General Avlora? She fell into the Norzelia River, and has not been seen since. And my siblings, Thalos and Erika? They died, fighting bravely in battle. My condolences, Your Grace. I understand. I have fewer pieces on the board than ever now. Pieces? Really is true what they say about him. It seems I was wrong to think that Hyzant would remain idle. Or was my more grievous error to be taken in by the Prince's false death? Hmm. Regardless, I was a fool to show House Wolfhorn any mercy. Your Grace. Reports from the battlefield tell of an unknown weapon being brought to bear against our forces. Oh? Continue. A purple explosion was seen when the bridge to Castle Whiteholm collapsed. That bridge has weathered the elements for untold generations. We mustn't allow Heisen to think they've won the upper hand. I intend to answer their weapon with one of my own. After retaking Whiteholm Castle, Roland assumes the throne. Joy over the return of the line of Glenbrook sweeps the kingdom. Yet not everyone is quick to welcome Roland back with open arms. Life under as frosty rule treated them well, and they suspect him to be naught but a figurehead of a puppet regime. Roland's absence, it seems, made room for discord among his subjects to flourish. There you are, Your Majesty. Ah. Huet. Pray, do not sound so dismal. Now that we have retaken Whiteholm Castle, you are Glenbrook's rightful king. We've an entire kingdom to rebuild out of the ruins of war. Patriot and the others have been demanding utmost haste. I understand that, I do. But... Oh, Cordelia. If I should lose you too, I... I... I know you have suffered many hardships. But pray, do not let yourself succumb to despair. Me, our comrades, your people... All of us are eagerly awaiting the era of peace our new king will bring. King, eh? My father never once let his emotions overcome him. Not even the day my mother died. I had every intention of following his stoic example, but... Majesty, I bring word from the infirmary. Is it Cordelia? Pray tell me she is all right. She is indeed recovering a pace, Your Majesty. Oh, thank the stars. It seems she has something to discuss with you all, if you will hear her out. Of course. Tell her we'll speak in the garden, but only if it will not tax her over much. Yes, sire. Huet, fetch Saranoa and the rest. Tell them to come to the garden as soon as they are able. It would be my pleasure. What is it? You're smiling. Uh, it's only... I thought it would be some time yet before I saw you look so at ease. I'll return shortly with the others. Cordelia, you've returned to me after so long. But slow and steady is the path to recovery. Yes, there is no rush.
So that is what happened in my absence. Yes. Gustadolf was a clever ruler. After the invasion, Patriot and his royalists cozied up to Esperos in order to protect themselves. Gustadolf used them to his every advantage. He stripped them of their privileges and left them nothing but their governing responsibilities. I don't think Patriot much cared for that, but it did ensure everything continued smoothly without interrupting the people's lives. Now I understand why there was little unrest after the occupation began. A clean, effective takeover by a well-seasoned commander. But all the while, he was preparing to face the next conflict. Wait, does he intend to march on Hyzant next? I believe so. I wish I could be more specific. But the Goddess of Shield cannot protect the Holy State's capital from Esfrost. Not anymore. He said it will all be over once the Death Snell is ready. What is this Death Snell? A new weapon born from the coupling of his frosty ironworking and explosive projectiles. Phallus claimed it is powerful enough to break through the goddess's shield. To think Esfrost is capable of creating such a monstrosity. Ah, so much for their reign of peace. Taking over Glenbrook was only the first move in a bigger gambit to seize the source. I am disturbed to learn of Gustadolf's plan. But rebuilding our capital must take priority. Very well. We should investigate the extent of the damage and discuss how best to proceed from there. House Wolfort will lend whatever aid you need. Thank you, Sarah Noah. But since you are one of their saintly seven now, I'd ask you to keep an eye on Hyzant as well. Cordelia? Apologies. A brief spell of dizziness. I have been looking everywhere for you, Your Highness. A patriot. I do not recall giving you leave of the infirmary. Your injuries are still healing. Would you undo all the trouble I went through to get you the best of care? Pray return to the infirmary at once. It wouldn't do to push yourself, Cordelia. Rest now. Leave everything to me. All right. We got a pretty good understanding of the damage in the capital, my lord. It's... Uh, a tad more than we were expecting. I see. Then we must make haste with repairs. Let's report this to Hyzant and see what aid they can give us. Was there anything of note besides damage? There ain't an easy way of putting this, but not everyone's exactly pleased to hear Prince Roland's returned. Esfrost exempted Glenbrook's subjects from the salt tax, likely a bid to get in everyone's good graces. And a damn good one at that. But more than that, the so-called freedom Gustadolf brought to the kingdom seems to have made a splash. He threw out the old ways and made it so anyone could better their lot in life depending on their ability, instead of their birthright. Just as in Esfrost. Then the people must have looked quite favorably upon Gustadolf's rule. I wager folks ain't too pleased to see us since they figure it means things will go back to how they used to be. Uh, Roland surmised as much. We must do something to show the people his is a return worth celebrating. Anna, have you looked into the state of affairs in the castle? Yes. The head of the Royalists, Minister Patria, is extending his influence. He made quite the name for himself, even under Gustadolf. Though he seems eager enough to support King Roland, he was just as eager to serve the Archduke. I do not believe we can trust him. Distinguished members of House Wolford, how hard you are all working to rebuild our capital. What a delightful thing to see. Minister, you do us a great honor visiting us out of all the many other responsibilities that must vie for your attention. Oh, come now, do not think yourself so insignificant. 
The entire kingdom owes you its thanks, myself included, of course. We are so grateful for House Wolfert's aid, even though you now serve a different master. We are only doing what any of King Roland's loyal vassals would. Ah, oh, speaking of the king, I'm afraid we've a bit of a problem. His majesty seems to be entertaining thoughts of retaliating against Esfrost. But the people have had their fill of war. And I'm sure you're already aware the people look upon the royal line with disfavor. <sighs> I only beg you take every care going forward. A warning. Even so, there is naught we can do but focus on rebuilding. Indeed. Let us return to the king and apprise him of our progress. I would walk the city with Sheila a bit longer and speak with the people. As you wish. But this is not the capital you knew. Be careful, my love. There are more who accepted Esfrost's rule than I imagined. Glenbrook's history is long. Yet, that is why hierarchy and precedent hold sway. This is a stubborn land, my lady, not given to easy change. Though Archduke Gustadolf, acting in the name of freedom, granted privilege after privilege to the powerful, for people used to Glenbrook's rigid customs, I suppose that sort of change must have been too seductive to resist. Perhaps, but his freedom was not but greed and cruelty. Lady Frederica, I've been searching everywhere for you. A Wolfort messenger. Did you run all this way? What's happened? My lady. I hail from Castle Wolfort, bearing tidings of Lord Simon. Has he awakened? He has. He is in high spirits and recovering well. And he is most pleased to hear of the capital's recapture. He bids you visit Castle Wolfort so he can honor you himself. Oh, I must bring these glad tidings to Saranoa at once. How long it has been since I've seen him smile. There is one more bit of news I have for you, my lady, but it is not so happy. Is there some sort of trouble in the Wolfort Domain? Bandits are laying waste to the Rosellen village. To our shame, Castle Wolfort does not have enough soldiers to stop this. We would beg Lord Serenoa's wisdom in this matter. The enemy must be powerful indeed. We cannot leave the Rosellen village defenseless. Let us inform the others. Messenger, with us. Well, well, things are about to get interesting. 